Man, Zelda is great. Phillips. I really love Zelda. I'm happy. CDI. I don't think there's a single Zelda game in the world that I don't love. We don't speak its name. Hashtag Zelda, hashtag CDI, hashtag Nintendo, hashtag Google Plus, hashtag social media, hashtag new YouTube, hashtag so funny, hashtag lol PVG moment, hashtag subscribe. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and I know what you're probably thinking. Peanut Butter Gamer, isn't Zelda month supposed to be a time to talk about how good Zelda is? So why are you talking about such a bad Zelda game? Well, sometimes in order to appreciate something that is truly good, you have to look at the alternative something that is truly bad. Or at least that's the excuse I'm using anyway. So yeah, today I'm gonna be looking at Link, the faces of evil for the CDI. Or as my disc says, Lonic Professor Levi. Okay, that last part is obviously supposed to say the faces of evil, but seriously, the first part just says Lonic. Lonic. So yeah, this is a bootlegged game, in case you haven't figured that out yet. I wish I had realized that before I bought it off eBay. All right, well, let's get this thing started. Future PBG, fix that in post. Okay, just gotta take the game here and put it there. Fill the transparent layer with a picture of a creepy pig I found on Google Image Search, and perfect! The first thing you'll realize when you turn on the faces of evil is that you make some pretty poor life choices. The second thing you'll realize are the cutscenes. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy. They're bad. Some people have complained in the past about Zelda not having voiceovers, but personally, I think it's better without them. And this is a prime example of the absolute worst that could happen if you gave Link a voice. How about a kiss? For luck. You've got to be kidding. My sentiments exactly, Zelda. <laughs> If you've seen anything from the Zelda CDI games, it probably is the cutscenes. They were pretty notorious for a while and were often used in videos called YouTube Poops a few years ago. And I figured for old time's sake that I'd have my own little go at one. Enjoy! Oh boy! I'm so hungry, I could eat- E. E. G. E. Wow! What are all those kings? My boy! I apologize for that. Anyway, let's continue with Link's tutorial. Hey, wanna fight the forces of evil in Korodai? Check it out, it's easy. When I'm crouching, you can make me do the duck walk. Cool, huh? No. This game has terrible controls, but I think that was probably a given. What's even worse is that not only do the controls suck, the control er sucks. Well, at least mine does anyway. Despite there being three buttons, somebody decided that it was a good idea to make up on the control pad be the jump button. Fine, I can deal with it. But I can't deal with it when the control pad freaking sticks so much. Seriously, I'm not even pressing anything here. The controller is just stuck. It's so freaking frustrating that I might even say a swear. Okay, well, let's go give the Keeper de la Shop a little visit. What you got for me, Shopkeep? Lamp oil, rope, bombs. You want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rubies. Okay, did they even play a single Zelda game before they made this? There are so many canonical errors in this game. First of all, it's rupees, not rubies. And speaking of rupees, or I guess I should say rubies. Thank you. They couldn't even get the colors and the prices right. As you can see from this chart, rupees aren't 100% consistent in every Zelda game, but even still, green is always one. How much is it in this game? Five. And what's worth one rupee? Red. AKA what is usually 20 rupees. I mean, no big deal, it's only 19 off, close enough. And oh yeah, still on the topic of rupees, it turns out that you need a lot of them. So we better go farm some enemies. Boy, this sure is a great way to start a game, huh? Farming for money against mindless generic enemies, whoop de freaking do It's almost like I don't want to kill myself. So I eventually blow up this rock to enter the cave, and great, it's pitch black dark. But what's even worse is that I can't find the exit again. Since the middle button is both pause, but only while crouched, because this game is just fashion forward like that, enter doors and use items, I just end up throwing bombs around like an idiot. Seriously, there are three buttons. Why not use them? Whoa, it's a huge crab guy. Da -da 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 -da. 
Well, that was the most fun I've had so far, I'm sorry to say. Biggest crab I ever caught. <laughs> it's a goma. You're pretty good. Here. Thanks. Alright, just in case it wasn't obvious enough, that guy just gave us the magic sword, which allows us to shoot beams out of our sword when we have full health. But really? Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and this is my Faces of Evil walkthrough. Make sure that before you do some other stuff, you go completely unprompted to the weird crab fisherman guy so that he can say, Hey, what a catch I just got! <laughs> and you can say, Oh cool, now give me a sword! Because of all the people to get my sword enchanted by, naturally, it should be the old wonky fisherman. Okay, well, let's go to Nortinka. You know, the completely not made up place in Zelda lore. This is about the point where I gave up trying to figure out what to do on my own and just consulted the internet. And the guide I found told me that I needed to collect 100 snowballs. Snowballs. What kind of Zelda game is this that I need to collect 100 of anything, much less snowballs, which isn't even a real item? I mean, sure, whatever. I'll just stick 100 snowballs down my pants. I'm sure that'll go well. Now I'm in a place called Toiku Lighthouse. It's just some red mountainous looking area, but I gotta say, the music is pretty cool. It sounds like I'm getting ready to run a marathon or something. we come across this lady who's apparently more concerned with her necklace that was stolen than she is about all the baby dragons flying around in her house. Get my necklace back from Gliok, okay? Pretty please? Uh, okay. Sorry I died. Here's some fairies! Whoa, I think Link is high on something. What was in those cheeseburgers? Oh... And that's about the point where I stopped playing. You know, took a nice calm break, got some sleep. The only problem is when I came back to play the next day, my save file was gone. Just lovely. So I guess I'll have to play through the first half of the game again. <sighs> I can do this. eventually got back to where I was, did some more crap, and found Zelda, but uh-oh! Trickaroo! It's the old Swapsies! You got me! Now I'm in some cave, and Jafar over here is showing me some epic cutscene about some skeletons. Oh boy, and here they are! I'm just like a regular Jason and the Argonauts over here. That was it? Why give them an introduction cutscene if they just die in one hit like a regular enemy? What's the point? Oh wait, there is no point other than to trap you down in this area that you can't get out of. Seriously, there is no way out. I was actually petrified that I was stuck and might have to restart again until I realized there were some falling rocks that could kill me. Because you know what's better than stairs? Killing yourself with rocks. Basically, most of this game consists of running around to random places and killing random bosses for no apparent reason. Some of them are hard and some of them are easy, but one thing that is consistent their death scenes are really bad. No! 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 Oh, lucky shot! Golly! Oh my goodness, this is awful! You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh jeez! You just know that this person's cutscene has got to be good. Won't you please jump across that little old chasm and cut my daddy's chains? Pretty please? Have a heart. 
For the probably at least 50% of you who didn't understand a word she just said, I swear I keep having to listen to these cutscenes at least twice just to comprehend them. There's Drulik round the side of Glutko. She wants us to go save her dad, but golly, I don't know. He sure seems pretty happy to me. One more? Okay, wow. That was actually kind of terrifying. He just freaking ate that guy. Kind of reminds me of that old Odyssey movie with the Cyclops. I swear, it's almost like they took more inspiration from Greek epics than they did from the actual Zelda franchise. So after quite a long grind through the game, you eventually kill some wolf guy and get the Crystal of Vision. Then you go to the magic carpet guy's house and he says this. At last, you have the vision to find my house. Now you will see the sand crumies that prevent your approach to Ganon. Go with many blessings. What? That doesn't even make sense. See his house? What does that even mean, see his house? Of course I can see his house. It's right there. Anybody could. You can even see it from the map screen. Are you trying to tell me that the whole time I've been playing this game, my ultimate goal other than to defeat Ganon was to be able to see his house? Okay, making a good game. That is hard, but is it really that hard for your game to make any sense? Not only does it make no sense as a Zelda game, I could go on for hours talking about that, but it doesn't even make sense as a standalone game. Enemies spawn out of nowhere, most of the items, not to mention cutscenes, make no sense, there's no logic to where I'm going, who I'm killing, and why, and a lot of the bosses I kill keep reappearing with no explanation. But all of that stuff I could and did mostly ignore. But this seeing his house business? No. No, I will not ignore this. I'm mad about it. So for the sake of wrapping this freaking thing up, let's go ahead and skip to Ganon's lair. No, not into the pit, it burns! First of all, that's a book, not a pit. And second of all, I just saved you from Ganon. You did not. You, Link, are the hero of Koridai. I guess that's worth a kiss, huh? Huh. Zelda is a b I won. I'm done. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my video. It's over. If you haven't already, then why don't you click this very conveniently placed subscribe button up here. If you like the t-shirt I was wearing, it's actually a Zelda Month exclusive t-shirt that you can get this month only, and you can find that in the link below in the description. And while you're at it, why not watch last week's Zelda Month video, The Top 10 Masks and Majora's Mask. See you next time.